you know, Adam had alluded to, we pushed him off this cliff into the great unknown. And then a couple of months later, I called to say, hey, by the way, Lord's leading us back. Um, but I tell you, my prayer is that we see many chase after God into the great unknown. If that be your, his plan for your life. I truly believe that as we obediently walk in his ways that we find God's best. That we otherwise stagnate and we miss what God desires if we're not willing to be obedient to the way he leads us in our lives. You know, for Shelly and I, whenever we move to a new location, for anyone, it, it takes a little while to get connected. When we moved here on December 20th, we were greeted with lots of waving hands and thanks to Deanne Dalton, some pom-poms. Leave it to Deanne. As we pulled into the Allen's property and parked our Penske truck in their pole barn, uh, we were welcomed well. And although we were immediately embraced by the church, we still had to get connected in other ways. Nate and Haley getting them registered for school. We had to find doctors and dentists and grocery stores and gas stations. It takes a while to get connected whenever you move to a new location. Has anyone here ever moved? I would think most people in this room, if you never, you know, I, I have met people that have never moved in their lives, though. It takes a little while to get connected, doesn't it? It does. You know, if it weren't for this church, we wouldn't have much of a connection with this community. Of course, in our case, we would have zero connection with this community. Uh, so we're so grateful for Connection Point, and it's bringing us to be able to do life with you, to chase after Jesus and what he desires of this church. Uh, we consider it a blessing that that's our calling. But I'd like to ask, in what ways has Connection Point gotten you connected? The church get you connected with Jesus. We've seen that specifically in the last five, six weeks. Close to 60 people connected with Jesus. Did this place get you connected with other people? The body of Christ. We, we can't do life alone. We, we're meant to do it together. Or maybe this church got you connected with life purpose. Helping to point you in the direction in which God wants you to go. Because here's what I know. We were all created for connection. To be connected with our creator first and foremost, but to also be connected with others in our life purpose. Paul writes about how a church should be connected in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, <laughs> and if you don't have your Bible, you have some underneath the, the pews in front of you, you're welcome to take that home if you don't have a Bible at home. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm actually going to be reading from Eugene Peterson's The Message. So if you have a digital device that's simple, just click over to the version that I'm going to be reading from this morning. If not, you may want to follow along on the screen. You know, whenever I, I look at a message, and Lord, I know you want us, as we're continuing this Life Together series, to talk about the body of Christ, uh, I usually read from five different versions of that passage. I just want to soak in the word. So I read from the ESV, the English Standard Version, the, the New Living Translation, the New International Version, the New American Standard, so NASB, and then the last one's a message. Usually those five, I'll read the passage in those five um, to help me just dive into that passage. There's always something a little bit different in those translations and what you draw out. And as I was reading through 1 Corinthians 12 this last week and preparing this message, I got to the message, Eugene Peterson's message, and I thought, this is such a fun rendering of this passage. Uh, we're going to read that one this morning. So I do invite you to also stand for the reading of God's word. Uh, we do revere the word of God. We don't take it for granted that God speaks to us, speaks to us through his word. So 1 Corinthians 12, I'm going to read verses 12 through 31. So Paul writes, your body has many parts, meaning your physical body, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you are still one body. And it's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. I'm going to come back to that. We each used to independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life. I love that. In which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. In two weeks, we've got water baptism. And if you pay attention, I talk about being baptized into Jesus Christ and his church. It's a wonderful baptism. Each of us is now a part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, his spirit, where we all come to drink. That's what we do here today. We come on a Sunday and we drink from the fountain of the spirit of God. 
The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, like labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. You're significant in the kingdom of God. A body isn't just a simple part blown up into something huge. It's all about the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand, embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to this body. Would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like eye, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place on the head, would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. What a good word. We are a part of something great, but only significantly as we as a whole are a part of that, not by ourselves. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. Yes, it would. But we have in what we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you? Or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out? I love that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. Very true, especially if you have church potluck. You won't see what you're eating, but you could eat it. When it's part of your own body you are concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is, without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. Here's one of my favorite sentences. Here we go. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair? <laughs> I love that. The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention, the parts we don't. The parts we see, and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, and this is an important part, body. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt. And in the healing. This is why we do accountability and member care. We have to be a part of each other's healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. Isn't that great? One body, one part of the body is joyful. Shouldn't the whole body be joyful in what God is doing? You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I know that was lengthy this morning. First point is this. You were created for connection to live a rich and satisfying life. When you said yes to Jesus, here's what Eugene Peterson says in the message. He writes, By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used and independently call our own shots. This is what we used to do. But then we entered into a large and integrated life. I love this. Apart from Christ, what does he say? We are partial and living piecemeal lives. Isn't that the case? When all of a sudden we enter into the kingdom of God, we enter into the family of God, we now live a large and integrated life. Think about the example of Adam and Melissa Tweet. As you give to our global village fund, which many of you do, this is how the church supports people going to the Dominican Republic. How could you ever on your own, yes, you could jump on a plane and go make a difference in the Dominican Republic, maybe. But it's amazing that as a part of the body of Christ, the things that we can do together that we could never hope to do apart. Adam and Melissa are a part of our church by way of going to the Dominican. We help fund them, we send them, we pray for them. It's an amazing thing that we get to live this large, integrated life as we devote ourselves to the family of God. The old labels, Eugene Peterson says, we once used to identify ourselves. Labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. So what is that comprehensive label? The church. The church is that comprehensive label. We come together in one spirit 
as the church. This wonderful, life-giving, Jesus-exalting, mission-minded family, faith family called Connection Point. Jesus said he came to bring people a rich and satisfying life, life abundantly, life everlasting. This is the promise. But here's what he also says. To find your life, you must lose it. To follow him, you must give up everything. Following Jesus, I want you to know, is not for the faint of heart. But it can be the adventure of a lifetime as you link arms with your brothers and sisters in the church and dedicate yourself to making disciples of every nation. If you're looking for a rich and satisfying life, get connected with brothers and sisters in this church. Next time you have opportunity to join a connect group, this is the final week of connect groups. We kind of had a snow day. So those are going to have a time off. We have about a month off. Connect groups are going to come back at the end of May. When you have opportunity, join one. When opportunities are presented for serving others, find a place to lose your life so that you might find it. Jesus can grant you a rich and satisfying life as you get connected at church. Second thing we understand is you were created for connection to fulfill your God-given destiny. Peterson continues in this passage. He says, I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. In other words, you as a part of the body of Christ, because we are together, you are more significant than if you were off on your own. More significant, not less. Everyone in this room is important to the kingdom of God. Everyone. Everyone in this room is vital to the kingdom of God. Every one. Everyone has a part to play in this great rescue of seeing people move from lost to found. Whether you play music, advance slides, teach kids, or greet people as they come in the door, your place in this church is very, very important. I love this paraphrase. I mentioned it and I'll say it again. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full bodied hair? Sounds like a uh, commercial. What Peterson is saying is this, whether seen or unseen, the part you play is absolutely significant. If you clean the carpets, you're important. If you set up the stage, you are important. If you set out donuts, I think many would say you're very important. <laughs> if you set up communion, you're important. I get an amen on donuts, that's awesome. <laughs> Everyone connected, working together to accomplish the work, the mission of the church, making disciples. I think we lose sight of that sometimes. Every part has an important part to play together. Connections are required for you to fulfill your God-given destiny. And the last point is this. You are created for connection to discover your real home. You may not realize it, but we are all refugees. I know there's refugees in the news a lot. Sometimes people say disparaging things about it, but we need to understand we're in that same category. This world is not our home. You know, one of the benefits of having lived overseas is America really is no longer home for us. And I know that seems weird, like how is that a benefit? But let me explain. Living in Jerusalem almost four years, Jerusalem is not home. Sudan, for us, it's not home. But we lived overseas for enough years, and what you find is once you've done that for enough of a length of a time, America's no longer home for us. Our soul is restless, but it's meant to be, because we're not home yet. Heaven will one day be our home. But this is the cool thing about the church. The place called home for the people who believe in Jesus is the church. I want you to know that no matter what else is going on in your life, no matter who else accepts you or rejects you, the church is your home away from heaven. I'm a part of this church. You are a part of this church. And what we see is, is that we are responsible to take care of it. We're here taking care of this church, but it's not ours. It belongs to Jesus. I have a lot of responsibility for her, and so do you. And here's what I know, that we want to make sure we're building the church, building the house that Jesus wants, a home where people get connected. You are created to be connected with your creator. You are created to be connected with others. 
and to be created with your life purpose. Jesus uniquely de designed you for it. It's vital to get connected. So here's what I'm going to ask. As the music team, feel free to come forward, and we're going to close out in song here in a moment. So I want to ask, are you living a disconnected life? But do you desire to be connected today? You can start by dedicating your life to Jesus, and there'll be a time for that, his church, and God's purpose for your life. When you came in today, there was a card on your seat. Why don't you grab that? It says, I will get connected. If you want to grab that, we're going to do something with that now. In the coming weeks, you're going to be given opportunity. We are going to look at Vision Sunday next week and the following week, looking at what it means to be on mission for Jesus. You'll have great opportunity to get connected, but not just for yourself, for we want to get others connected as well. So what I'm going to encourage you to do today is if you can say, you know what? I, I pledge I can commit myself to getting connected. I just encourage you to sign that card, take it home with you when you leave today, put it on the fridge, put it in your Bible, put it on the bathroom mirror. As a reminder to say in coming weeks as opportunity presents itself, I'm going to pledge myself to get connected so that I can be connected with Christ, my creator, connected with others, and connected with God's life purpose for me. So just take a minute. There's pens in your seat back if you need those that you can sign that card and take it home. Our near neighbor community, which right now stands as majority unchurched, 67% of the people outside these walls, I've shared it before, they don't darken the doors of a church. And I'm convinced we can make a change there instead of majority unchurched to majority following Jesus if we commit ourselves to getting connected and connecting others as well. So can you make that commitment here today? I'm going to give you opportunity. So I'm going to invite you to stand as we close in song. I do invite you to take that card home with you as a reminder to say, I pledge myself to getting connected. As you stand, and we're going to close in song, before we do, if you're here today and have yet to make a decision to follow Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity to be reconnected with your Creator, to get connected with your life purpose. So I'm just going to invite you with every head bowed. If you're here and want to say yes to Jesus, to be reconnected to your Creator, I just invite you to raise your hand so we can pray with you, give you a Bible, and lead you in that decision of what it means to journey with Jesus. So if you're here today and want to say yes to Jesus, I just invite you to raise your hand so that we can equip you for working in his kingdom, for serving with him. Anyone here today that would say yes to Jesus? We have somebody over here on the left. Thank you. Anybody else here today that needs to make a decision to follow Jesus, to commit your life to him? Lord, we thank you that we can look upon your face. I do pray that you would motivate us daily to abide in you, that we can look on your face, not just on Sundays, but every day. God, I pray that uh, we would live out the words written in this great book, the Bible. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to love you and love others well this week. I pray that we would live in the joy of the Lord, that we would run the race well, and that we'd return next week ready to take place and take part in what you're doing here. God, I do pray that you would equip these people for your service and your kingdom. Thank you that we can be a part of what you're doing in the world. May we not take it for granted. May we find our life purpose in it, Lord Jesus. And God, I do ask that you would restore relationships. Jesus, between husband and wife, between parent and child, between grandparent and grandchild. Jesus, I pray that relationships would be restored in your name. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May you grant you your favor and show you his peace. Amen. Go with God.